อันนี้ตั้งแต่หอเฮตทหารมาเนาะหลับปีนั้งพันก็ได้หกสิบเจ็ดเนาะหอเฮตทหารหลับมืดออกหลับปีนั้งพันก็ได้เจ็ดสิบหกออกหลับทหารปลดปล่อยมัดประเทศลาวลายยุ่งนานะถือว่าอากาศที่ระเบิดนี่มาไล่ก็สองล้านตัวอยู่ในประเทศลาวตอนนี้ทีมงานลาวอันบีนาอนทั้งโลกของทั้งโลกนี่คือประเทศที่มีความร้อนที่สุดเราคิดว่าคัมบูดีเป็นประเทศที่ดีเราคิดว่าเวียดนามเป็นประเทศที่ดี But Lao is the worst. MyMac is an Australian charity, and it stands for Mine Victims and Clearance. It was in fact started in 2002 by sappers or engineers who were tunnel rats in the Vietnam War. They really know the issues about mines and bombs. Since then, we have done a lot of work in Southeast Asia. We have done work in Cambodia. We have done work in Vietnam. We have done work in Sri Lanka. And then we found Lao. In the first village that we ever went into, there were 65 bombs that we took out of the village. Now we cleared school grounds in Cambodia, but here in Lao, there were bombs in the playground. ใหญ่ของระเบิดนี้ที่ว่าต่ำลุงนี่ที่เบาที่หุที่ว่าระเบิดใหญ่เนี่ยก็บังเอิญก่อนมาเตกบังเอิญกับมาเตกเนาะแต่ว่ายัง 30% เป็นเซนยังประเทศเตะยังประเทศลาวนี่นะยังประเทศเตะแล้ววันนี้เราบรรดาปั้นพ่อแม่ปลาสุปไปเฮ็ดอยู่เฮ็ดกินนี้แล้วไปทางให้ทําสวนกับเตกเนาะกับมีเนาะนี่อย่างโคเนาะเท่านั้น There are 15 foundries in Laos. There are no deliveries of iron ore over there. It's all from scrap metal. Every two or three days, somebody will put some live bombies in the foundry, okay. and it, it explodes. Yeah. Yeah. Every every few days. I see. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how much uh, do you pay for scrap steel? And who gets the scrap metal? The families that have no jobs. Because what happens is the foundries provide the metal detectors, which they get from Vietnam for about $10, and then they lend them to the kids. They lend them to the families. We've got whole families out there doing it. And of course, whole families and children and adults getting blown up all the time. One of the things about the clearance of these mines is that we actually partner with an organisation called PCL. And with PCL, we have actually uh, been involved in training teams of UXO clearance people. Once you complete the course, you'll be working with PCL and they are conducting the course in conjunction with MyVac. แต่ก่อนไม่เยือนเก็บกูดระเบิดดีเห็ดซัวนะก่อนเขามาเห็ดเวียกเก็บกูดระเบิดตอนไปเห็ดเวียกนั่งพี่เซลเขาจะมีบอลพักเศร้าและมีผู้ซักเครื่องและขาอาหารการกิน
น้ำเพื่อต้องการพิสูจน์เลยเลยอยากมีความหูเลยต้องการช่วยเหลือประชาชนภูเขาเพื่อความปลอดภัยของเขาเจ้า At the completion of our training, you will all be level one technicians. หลังจากเราเรียนแล้วเพื่อที่หูเขาบอกว่า30พันตอนเรียน30พันบัตรอุปโภคแล้วว่า50พันสิเพิ่มหายอยู่คันเรียนแล้ว The good thing about this is that they will get employment from any other UXO organisation in Laos that are involved in mine clearing. You are the first team that MIVAC has paid for the training to be a UXO technician. We are very proud to do that because now you are going to go on from here and be employed by PCL doing actual clearance, earning money for yourselves and earning money for your village. Yeah, thank you. I've been involved in bond clearance for, at least in this region, for for pretty close to 17 years in Cambodia before here. I've uh, been involved in managing different NGOs. And, uh, and in 2004, um, we formed PCL as a commercial company. Why I formed PCL was, was simply that I, I saw a lot of, I won't say wastage, because anything that gets done to help these people helps these people, but it, there's, there's ways and means of of actually being able to apply the dollar on the ground better. Um, and as a commercial company was really my only option. Now I can apply best practices techniques to clearing as much as I can for the dollar that's provided. We're clearing a lot of land for way less dollars than, than anyone else. What we have here is one of the PCL clearance areas. Uh, Konservan, the team leader, is approaching the site before um, we are allowed to walk on the site. You end up with an awful lot of, of inefficiency through the just not having the time on the ground. Whereas okay in. the way we do things is we, we move the people to an area, they stay in the area, we have very little drive time, very little downtime. 10 minute break is a 10 minute break. Our, our supervisors understand that good time management means more land cleared every day. And what happens after he's found the readings, he will then come back and excavate those particular readings. What we have is a BLU 26. This is the most common cluster munition found in Laos, um, next to the 3B. And the 3B is the one that's shaped like a pineapple. Um, it has an effective kill radius of anything within five meters will be killed. It has an effective lethal fatality radius of 30 meters, but it does shoot its ball, its ball bearings out to 100 meters, which can cause serious harm and injury. They require a, a demolition of 100 grams of TNT to destroy. And under no circumstances does PCL allow the movement of any cluster munition, especially the BLU-26s. The other thing that we were told about when we were there was that there was a communal rice paddy. When they plough the rice field, it's only ploughed to a very shallow depth. Why? Because there are bombs and bombies through it. Two years ago, two of the people in the village were killed as a result of a bomb going off. They know that there were more mines in that rice paddy. It was only 10 hectares. 87 mines we took out of there. With reference to the cost of clearance, the larger the area, obviously, the the cheaper you can amortise the figures across the hectares or square metres or, or square kilometres, whatever you're clearing for people. On average, for the, the humanitarian clearance that we've done for MIVAC, it's cost around about $1,500 to $1,600 a hectare. You know, so 15 to 16 cents a square metre. 
is not bad. Um, on average, others uh, double and sometimes triple and beyond that, that figure. If you're talking in terms of, of wanting to help people, aid money should be like any other money, in my opinion. If, for example, the Australian government wants a job done in Australia, they tender it on the AusTender website and it goes out to tender. The most competitive, most efficient, most professional bid will win it. There's far more efficiency involved in that process. So why can't humanitarian aid be the same? The government has a responsibility to spend aid money equally as well as what it does to spend taxpayers' money on, on infrastructure. And so it should be a tender process. Commercial, humanitarian, what does it matter if one company is for profit and one company is not? If the tender winner can produce more land for the dollar at the same quality. Everyone is, is certified here. You cannot do clearance in this country unless you have accreditation from the regulatory authority. So we have to abide by the same rules as the humanitarian clearance do. So if it went to tender and we won it, then that has to be the best thing for the, for the end user, doesn't it? And that's what AIDS all about. Dick Smith here. Every dollar you donate helps the people affected by these bombs. So I ask you to give. It'll make you feel good. <laughs>